All right, so welcome into my All right, so welcome into my official NFL week number 13 top 10 best bets where I go through my 10 favorite bets here for week 13 beginning on Sunday night, a little AFC NFC. It is the Kansas City Chiefs traveling to Lambeau and I do like the over 46. We saw the Chiefs kind of break out on offense last week against the Raiders. They're going on the road against a Packers team. The real reason I'm taking the over in this game is because of the emergence of Jordan Love. I think he continues that. I do like the Packers to cover in this game, but I'm looking at an over-under in the mid-40s, and I will take the over with the Chiefs playing better on offense. I think Mahomes is due for another good performance after kind of struggling there for a few games, gets back on track in Vegas and he's going to carry that over into Green Bay. And again, you've got a Green Bay offense playing better coming off that Thanksgiving Day win. Great, especially in the first quarter, Jordan Love had like two touchdowns, 130 yards. Christian Watson looking good. The over in that one. Moving on to number nine, it is the Dolphins traveling to Landover, Maryland to take on the Commanders. And I do like Washington plus the nine and a half in this one. They're a streaky team. They cover some games. Some games they get blown out. Last week, I was off of them. I was correct. Now I'm going in on them. I do think there might be a locker room that gets galvanized after the defensive coordinator gets fired. You do have a Dolphins team. Last week, they cover a spread easily against a horrible Jets team. This is going to be a little bit tougher for them. I could see the Commanders jumping out early in this game. Again, they're a streaky team. This is the NFL. I know everyone's going to go crazy and say, they just lost by 35 points. How could you pick them to cover against a great Miami team? They're at home. And also, Miami has some games where they really struggle to run the ball. This could be another one. I will take Washington to keep this game surprisingly close. I do like the over. Sam Howell leads the NFL in passing yards right now. Moving on to number eight, it is the Chargers traveling to Foxborough to take on the Patriots. And I do like the Chargers minus six. Apparently, this line opened minus four and a half. What great value that is. But yeah, I'll still take the Chargers to cover here. I would take them minus seven, maybe even minus eight, just based off of the fact it seems like the Patriots are a dead team right now. Will they start Mac Jones? Possibly. It almost feels kind of embarrassing because he's been benched four times this season, I believe was the number. And then Bailey Zappi behind him has not done anything. It does seem like the Patriots, they are a very well-run franchise. Feels like they understand, they realize all right, whatever, the jig is up, we're 2-9, and nine. let's not do anything stupid and win these games. Now, sure, they can say, well, Mac Jones is terrible, Bailey Zappi is terrible, we are trying to win, and certainly it's not like players are trying to lose, but I'm just saying the Patriots are a very well-run organization. They are not going to do this thing like the Atlanta Falcons where they win five or six games every year, they never get a top pick, and they never get a franchise quarterback. I really do trust them to lose all of these games. I do not think this is going to be a close game. The Chargers, on the other hand, they're not tanking. They already have a franchise quarterback. They're trying to win these games. Their head coach is on the verge of getting fired. They're going to want this one. They're going to want to improve to five and seven. They still are in the mix for a wild card with the NFL expanding the playoffs. I think they win this game very easily against a demotivated Patriots team. Moving on to number seven, it is the Cardinals traveling to Pittsburgh. We've got a lot of AFC NFC games here. Cardinals going to a cold weather climate. One o'clock game, you're thinking it's going to be brutal, but I do like Arizona, surprisingly, to win this game outright. I am just not a believer in Pittsburgh. I understand the narrative. They fire Matt Canada. They've got a good offense now. I'm not buying it at all. They still struggled, especially in that first half against Cincinnati. Let's not overreact to that. And I realize the Cardinals... Last week, they got crushed by the Rams at home, but this is the NFL. Weird things happen, and the Cardinals, since Kyler Murray has come back, they've played better. I think they win this game outright, surprisingly. The Steelers are way worse than a 7-4 and four team. Realistically, based on their points scored versus per- points allowed, they probably should be like 3-8 and eight or 4-7. and seven. So I will take kind of a balancing game here with the Cardinals winning outright. Although, honestly, the Cardinals should just be trying to lose these games. Either way, I think they get a win there. Moving on to number six, it is the Lions traveling to New Orleans. And I do like Detroit. Let's not overreact. It was a very bad loss at home against an improving Packers team, but that's a team you got to beat. But Dan Campbell is a good coach. He's going to have these players ready, and you're taking on a New Orleans team. They lost last week. They didn't even cover against Atlanta on the road. They lost by like nine points. I like Detroit 
to go in there, score 30-plus, go into the Superdome, and come out with a win. New Orleans, I will admit, they're a very hard team to predict just because sometimes their defense shows up, other times it doesn't. The Derek Carr thing is very strange. He's a very average quarterback. I will take Detroit to get the job done and cover the four-point spread, scoring a lot with Jerry Goff, Jameer Gibbs, Amon Ross St. Brown, they get a win by 11 and a relatively easy cover minus the four. Moving on to number five, it is the Atlanta Falcons traveling to East Rutherford to take on the Jets. This is a crappy game. There's really nothing else I can say about it, but I do like the Jets to win this game outright. So I like them plus the three. The over-under sitting at 33 and a half. I wouldn't touch that number, but the Jets, it's been very hard with the quarterback situation, benching Zach Wilson. I do think, you know, we saw Garrett Wilson, the touchdown late last week, seven catches, they're, maybe they hit him for a long pass. I think the Jets are very motivated to win these games. I love the matchup of the Jets defense at home, cold weather against that porous Atlanta offense, whether they're starting Desmond Ritter or Taylor Heineke. I'm expecting the Jets defense to generate at least one short field, possibly two. It's just an amazing matchup. And then you bring the weather into it against a dome team, 40 degrees, maybe 35 degrees. I love the Jets plus the three. You have to be concerned about their offense for sure in the quarterback situation, but still, feels like the Jets are due for a victory here. They are still, again, very motivated trying to get Aaron Rodgers back with any sort of playoff hopes possibly in week 17. We will see. Moving on to number four, it's the Browns traveling to LA. There's a 425 game and there's just simply too many injuries for the Browns. I mean, we saw it last week against a Denver team. It's not like Denver has a great offense or anything. They end up w winning that game 29 to 12. The Browns, whether it's DTR, Joe Flacco possibly gets into the mix. They've got so many injuries, possibly Amari Cooper now injured. We've already seen the Nick Chubb out for the year since week two. It's just, it's very sad because the Browns have a very well put together roster, but you're looking at a Rams team that's really hitting their stride right now with Matt Stafford, with Cooper Cup. He was a little banged up, but I think he's back. The Rams, they were sitting minus four and a half. It got bet down to three and a half. I think that's because people respect the Browns defense and I agree, but there are just too many injuries. I think the Rams get enough short fields to win this game relatively easily. I have them winning by 14 and covering easily there. Moving on to number three, this is the big matchup of the week. The other 425 game, it is San Francisco traveling to Philadelphia, and I love this 49ers defense going on the road against an Eagles team that has really struggled on offense the last two game weeks to start the game. The first half has been a struggle for the Eagles. They've turned it on in the second half. I don't think you can do that against a solid San Francisco 49ers team with Chase Young, with Nick Boza. Give me the under 46. The Eagles are due for a bad performance, even if it is at home. And that's an over-under. That, that's kind of a girthy number right there in the mid-40s. I mean, if it was 41 or 42, certainly I would feel less optimistic. But I only have 37 total points being scored in this game, which means I love the under 46. Even if you get something like 24 to 21, let's say the Eagles score a touchdown, maybe you know get to 21 points, you're still loving that under 46 because that's only 45 total points. So just a game where we saw the Eagles score a ton. They gave up a ton last week. I think it's kind of a lower scoring output this week with a 49ers victory. Moving on to number two, it is the Carolina Panthers traveling to take on the Buccaneers. And I love Carolina to win this game outright. It's not like Tampa Bay is anything special. And it seems like we get this over and over and over again where there's a narrative that gets drawn. Players get galvanized behind an interim head coach. Obviously, they're not giving up on Bryce Young. They're trying to win these games. There's no reason for the Panthers to tank. This seems like a prime opportunity for a team that's very motivated going up against a team that's not motivated at all. I understand you can say Baker Mayfield's a competitor. I get it. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. But still, the franchise trajectory of Tampa Bay is to really lose these games. You would love to finish the year 4-13. and 13. Carolina, they don't have their first-round pick. They don't care. They're trying to develop Bryce Young. They see what C.J. Stroud is doing. 
they really want this game and, and they want to, you know, have the narrative we're galvanized around Bryce Young, we fire our head coach and then win the next week. I could see that coming from this. That's why I like Carolina plus the five. And it's not like there's a crazy talent disparity. Remember, this was a Carolina team that was picking ninth last year. They moved up to number one. So this whole narrative that Bryce Young has nothing to work with and CJ Stroud has everything to work with, it doesn't make any sense considering Houston was the second worst team last year. Carolina was the ninth worst team. Carolina does have a decent roster, and I think they win this game on the road against a Bucks team that really has not been playing well recently. Moving on to number one, it is Denver traveling to Houston, and this seems like the most obvious bet ever. I think Houston is going to annihilate the Broncos. I understand the narrative, the Broncos winning five straight games. I think a lot of it is just a product of the NFL being very mediocre this year. The Broncos do not have a good defense. They do not have a good offense. They have not generated big plays. Russell Wilson has been a game manager this entire your run and I think you've got a Houston team really looking to break out after a tough loss they try the field goal late it bangs off the bottom of the upright whatever I like CJ Stroud in this matchup possibly getting all of his weapons back and this is just going to be an annihilation in my opinion I love Houston to win this game very easily and cover the three and a half point spread but either way guys that is going to do it for this video make sure you follow me on x link to that's always in the description